Hey folks, I'm Private Hudson and this is an early access look at Dead State. Dead State was announced back in 2010 by Double Bear Productions, a newly formed development studio. The game was slowly being developed in employees' spare time, but the project finally managed to take off after a successful $330,000 Kickstarter campaign in July 2012. Dead State is a post-apocalyptic RPG with zombies. Now before you sigh and say to yourself, not another zombie game, there's an important thing to take note of. Double Bear is run by Brian Mitsoda, who has worked for Black Isle, Troika, and Obsidian. His largest contribution to game development was his work as a designer and writer of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. I helped fund this game via Kickstarter because of that reason. Bloodlines is, in my opinion, one of the best games ever made. Well, not just that reason alone. Dead State isn't going to be just another zombie game. It's going to be a true computer RPG, one that harkens back to the glory days of the late 90s. Dead State genuinely feels like I'm playing something from 1998, and that is a glorious feeling. You create your own character and choose his or her stats, skills, and perks. After surviving a plane crash, your character wakes up in a basement of a school that has become a shelter of sorts to a group of survivors who rescued you. You quickly become the de facto leader of the group and tasked with what is to be expected from an actual zombie survival game, such as securing and fortifying the shelter, scavenging for supplies, and keeping the survivors happy. If at any point the shelter's fortifications are destroyed, the survivors lose confidence in you and select someone to replace you, or you die, then the game is over. The first 7 days demo was released just a few days ago, and has already received quite a bit of undeserved backlash. Ignorant people are spouting off that this is a paid demo. If the word demo was absent from the title, first seven days, then there would be no backlash. The whole purpose of this quote-unquote demo was to give us, the Kickstarter backers, a progress report, as well as a chance to experience some early gameplay while providing feedback. This demo is only available on Steam to save time, resources, and money on hosting platforms. It will also unlock to the full product once it launches, and backers who opted for a DRM-free version will still receive one as long as they did not redeem their Steam key. Making this demo available to everyone would be commercial suicide because guess what? I know this is rather shocking information for some, but the game isn't fucking finished. Hence, it's not a representation of the final product. Not only are there key features missing, but it's also filled with bugs and is crash prone. You can either spend $25 to play this version now and give feedback to the developers, or you can simply wait a few months for the game to be finished play the proper demo version for free, and then see if it's worth your $30. Moving along, the first seven days took me around four hours to play through. It was a short experience with many features missing, but it gave me a good idea of what to expect in the finished game. Demo was seven in-game days long, as you can expect from the title. The typical day generally begins with an event. Scripted events give you a task to accomplish to continue the story, while random events can show someone's displeasure towards you or a survivor asking for a day off. Afterwards, you can freely roam around the shelter and talk to various survivors. Once you're ready, assign some able-bodied people to do some work at the job board, such as repairing the fortifications, building other facilities inside the shelter, or upgrading weapons and tools. Then, grab some folks with you, head out to other zones to scavenge for supplies, hope you all make it back in one piece and go to sleep to end the day. Time only passes when traveling to locations, so your only limitations are medical supplies and weapons if you want to get as much scavenging done as possible. Dead State definitely feels like a late 90s RPG. The map, the travel system, combat, character screens, even the soundtrack all remind me of the original Fallout. Random encounters exist as well, but are currently disabled in this version. There's no doubt in my mind they too will be like the ones in Fallout. Character creation is absent from this demo. Instead, you get a pre-made character with a pretty general skill distribution. Another key feature that is disabled is leveling up. However, you should still be able to finish this playthrough without needing it. Either way, the leveling mechanic is going to be completely different from what you can expect. Experience points are not going to be gained through combat, but through completing goals. As a matter of fact, combat is not even going to be the core focus of the game. Dead State is approaching the zombie setting with something that no one has done before. An emphasis on actual fucking survival. That's right. Thank fuck you're not Rambo for a change. Dead State is challenging and hard. Medical supplies are scarce. Characters do not heal overnight. As you go into various locations to scavenge for goods, zombies are not the only thing you need to worry about. There are plenty of looters in the area too, 
some that are much better equipped than your puny little group. Dead State's premise was influenced by Matsuda's own personal experience during Hurricane Andrew. It's a game that is supposed to be about how people act during a crisis that is way beyond their control. This is what makes Dead State ambitious. There are many NPCs planned, with over 10,000 lines of branching dialogue. FAQs have stated that side characters in here have more lines of dialogue than major characters of Bloodlines. Each survivor has their own personality and skills. Not only that, but they can have existing relationships with current survivors or may develop some over time. The early access demo lasts for seven in-game days, while the total length of the finished game is supposed to take place over several in-game months. Combat is challenging and it's very easy to get killed. The developers have also stated it is impossible to have a perfect ending scenario where everybody survives. If you have seen my review of State of Decay, then you would know how disappointed I was with especially the shallow personalities of characters, the non-existent interactions between them, not to mention the butt-mashing combat system, the overly simplistic base building, and the complete lack of difficulty. Dead State appears to be the complete opposite. The demo only gives a little taste of what is to come, but it is easy to see how the game will develop further. So far, there are only around two characters that have different dialogue interactions with uh, each passing day. But you already experience a small portion of the relationship system. There are two characters, mother and a daughter, who have a close bond. The daughter is a medic, while the mother is good with melee combat. The mother becomes severely pissed at you if you take your daughter out on scavenging runs, while the daughter assures that she can take care of herself and does not need to be babysat if you leave her at the shelter. Since one of the key elements is maintaining your role as the leader of the group, it is easy to imagine the repercussions to morale and trust if one of them were to die. So not only do we need to take into account the needs of the group as a whole, but also the bonds that individuals develop over time. Aside from these two characters, there is a wounded man in the basement whose life is dependent on you getting him medicine, a shell-shocked woman on the second floor who becomes shaped by the way you talk to her, and a man covered in blood wielding an axe that stumbles upon your front gate one day. Their lives and their personality is pretty much defined by how you interact with them. One thing that I have not mentioned so far is the combat system. While it is not the focal point of this game, as I have previously stated, it is still inevitable to run into zombies and looters during scavenging runs. Combat is turn-based and is similar to Fallout, with the exception that you have full control over your party's actions. So Cassidy blowing a hole through Sulik's chest is not going to fucking happen. Your agility determines the amount of action points you get per turn, as well as your evasion rating, while the melee and range skills determine your combat ability. One extremely important thing to take note of is that perception stat determines combat initiative. There is no, we go first, then when we end our turn, the enemy gets a turn, and then they get to move, no. Every character's turn order is determined by their initiative, and if you skip your turn, you don't get it back. Noise and line of sight both play an important role in combat, and scavenging in general. Using loud weapons such as guns will not only attract zombies on the current map to your location, but may also spawn additional zombies around the map's entrances. Not only is this relevant in combat, but if you're unable to lockpick a door and you decide to bash it in with a sledgehammer or something, then you should probably be careful doing that. Line of sight allows for some very tense scenarios, like not being able to see zombies in the different aisles of a supermarket as you're trying to quietly maneuver around the area while you're looting it. I have a pretty funny story as a result of my own negligence. I generally break into places through the back door. I was in a restaurant and killed a looter that I ran into. When I was done searching the area, I decided to leave through the front door instead and instantly walked into three zombies that I had no vision of. They pinned me to the floor and took me out almost immediately. There is no seeing everybody on the map here, and as expected, your vision gets greatly reduced during nighttime. My only complaint about the combat is that it feels a bit too cramped. If you open a door to another room and you're met with a looter or a zombie right in front of your face, unless you walk a few steps back to lure them out, that character is going to be the only one doing combat with them. Characters can't walk through each other. Hallways and buildings and aisles and supermarkets are only one tile wide. I often found myself skipping turns for characters that had no way of actually joining a fight. You can swap tiles with a character, but the action point cost is so absurd that I found it better to just skip the turn 
so I can land more attacks with the other character in the next one. As far as early access issues go, the game crashed on me twice when I tried to give items from one character to another. The soundtrack would also sporadically go out on me. I had problems with inventory management, dragging and dropping items from one side of the screen to the other rarely seemed to work. The camera controls don't feel tight enough. Rotating with a mouse feels almost impossible due to a complete lack of control. Using the keyboard results in a better feeling, but I still don't have as much control as I would like. They should tone down the sensitivities of both methods. Either way, it's vastly superior to the awful fixed camera rotation of XCOM Enemy Unknown. Lastly, there are no tutorials or tooltips of any kind. Instead, there's a massive 50-page PDF manual available that explains every game element in huge detail. I actually prefer things this way, but it wouldn't surprise me if they include some sort of introductory assistance in the final product. As far as gameplay criticism goes, my only real complaint for now are that all the looters are hostile. At one point I came across a house that was besieged by zombies in the front. I snuck in through the back door and ran into a guy who instantly tried plugging me in with a shotgun, so I had no choice but to kill him. Was the intention of this scenario to portray my group and myself in the same light as other bandits? I don't know. It's probably way too hard to implement potential dialogue encounters with every single person in the game, especially since NPCs are not randomly generated. However, it feels a bit silly that every looter that you encounter is hostile, especially since some are lone wolves, and I sure as shit would not bonsai charge into a group of four armed people. For my final thoughts, Dead State is definitely a game that should be on your radar if you're a fan of late 90s RPGs, or, or actually just RPGs in general. I don't recommend buying it now unless you want to save 5 bucks. As a matter of fact, I don't recommend buying any game that is in early access, but I certainly do recommend that you keep yourself updated about how Dead State further develops and check out the demo when the product is fully finished. I'll definitely make a full-fledged review when that happens.